I call the June 3rd City Council meeting to order. Uh, as we go to a moment of silence, please remember the victims of the Virginia Beach shooting. Uh, let's stand for a moment of silence and pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. I want to uh, welcome those in attendance to tonight's meeting and uh, welcome anyone who may be watching the video feed later on. Uh, as Mayor Pro Tem, I'll be sitting in for Mayor Ross tonight. Mayor Ross has been spending some quality time with the family and will return at our next council meeting on June the 17th. Um, next we have the consent agenda. Unless there's any items that need to be pulled, we'll accept the motion for approval. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Councilmember Kaler. Aye. Levesse. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Edmondson. Aye. Culpepper. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem. Aye. Carried unanimously. Okay. Uh, item number four on the agenda next is the continuation of a public hearing regarding amendments of the city's unified development code relating to medical marijuana. Uh, the public hearing was initially opened on Monday, May the 20th. Uh, we'll have, we'll read exhibits and then uh, we'll go to city attorney Jack, Jackie Sumner for. The city has the following exhibit to enter into the record. Exhibit number one, council information form dated May 14, 2019 with attachments of planning commission memo, affidavit of publication, ap application with attachments, email from Chris White dated May 2, 2019, including four exhibits, MoCan trade, proposed statement of fiscal impact, Missouri's medical marijuana implementation, special report, cannabis jobs count, and bill number 4668, approving the amendments. Exhibit number one was entered into the record on May 20th, 2019. And tonight we're entering exhibit number two, council information form dated May 29, 2019, and bill number 4671, approving the amendments. This is it, all we have to offer for the record. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to request City Attorney Sum to review how we got here because it's a little abnormal to. Uh, Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. This is a continuation of a public hearing that began on May 20th, 2019, and I ask that the Council take notice of the exhibits that have already been offered and also take notice of the testimony that was given, and both of those are on the record from May 20th. The only item before the Council at this hearing tonight is a proposed amendment to Section 404.240E, Downtown Development Code, to add medical marijuana dispensary to the list of permitted uses in the mixed use and commercial building types. Thank you. Uh, next we'll welcome uh, Assistant Community Development Director Mike Malone. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, as, uh, as City Attorney Summer said, this is a continuation of public hearing from May 20th. Um, that, that portion of the original ordinance was uh, separated and continued to tonight so that we would have the opportunity to review the proposal to allow medical marijuana dispensary facilities in the downtown development code uh, with the downtown review board. Uh, staff met with the downtown review board on May 28th uh, and presented the proposed uh, code language and the, the downtown review board voted unanimously to recommend approval of the proposed uh, UDC text amendment to allow medical marijuana as a permitted use. Uh, and in addition, the board further recommended to also allow medical marijuana testing facility as a permitted use in the downtown development code. Um, that is it from staff's presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Council, any questions for staff? Okay. 
Thank you. Um, we'll go to the audience then. I guess anyone wishing to speak in support of? In support of? Anybody wishing to speak in opposition to? Opposition to. And no other council comments for the record? Go ahead. Uh, just, just to give a heads up, it, it doesn't necessarily relate what we're going to be voting on today, but in that downtown meeting, um, there was a letter and they did state that they at some time down the line would like us to look at reducing the buffer down to anywhere from zero to 300 feet so i just put that out so you for your information that those that didn't attend that meeting that that make you aware of all that okay thank you mayor pro tem yes and just as a point of clarification i think i know the answer but uh this does not influence at all the previous buffering that we had approved on the 20th that is correct it doesn't only the permitted use is for the council tonight. thank you okay thank you was the uh, councilman council member thank you Edmondson uh, was that in reference to 300 feet for all of it that they were talking about no just for the dispensary they were in discussion was about dispensary and just within the downtown area Mayor yes. Uh, just to piggyback on what Council Member Edmondson's talking about, there that letter not only talked about setbacks, but there's other some issues that are significant to downtown only, like the restriction on having dispensaries be located in the same place as a living residence. And so there's some downtown areas where there's a shop downstairs and they live upstairs. And so that's something significant to downtown. A uh, few other things, but yeah, they were very interested in actually attracting a dispensary downtown. And so they were interested in maybe even just doing zero setback for dispensaries, for testing facilities, uh, just all together. So um, that's not what we're approving tonight. Tonight we're just approving the permitted use, but they were very uh, eager to start addressing these issues. Good feedback, thanks. Okay. Uh, any other comments? If not, we will close this public hearing. All right. Uh, we'll move on to the introduction of readings of Bill 4671, amending the Unified Development Code relating to medical marijuana uses in facilities. Do we have an introduction? I'll introduce it, Your Honor. First reading of Bill number 4671, an ordinance amending section 404-240-E, Downtown Development Code of the Unified Development Code of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Blue Springs for medical marijuana uses in facilities. Move the bill be approved on the first reading and proceed with the second. Second. All in favor by aye. 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 Second reading. Second reading of bill, do you want to say all and opposed? Oh, uh, opposed? Aye. No. I'm for it. <laughs> Second reading of Bill Number 4671, an ordinance amending Section 404-240-E, Downtown Development Code of the Unified Development Code of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Blue Springs for medical marijuana uses and facilities. Move to approve the second reading and given the proper ordinance number. Second. Did you want to? Uh, any discussion before we go to roll call? Okay, roll call. Councilmember Levison? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem? Aye. Carried unanimously, given ordinance number 4829. Thank you. Uh, item number six, uh, staff has requested bill number 4672 proposing amendments to the code relating to small wireless facilities be uh, presented to the council for consideration at the June 17th meeting. Uh, no, act, no council action will be taken this evening on this. You want a motion for that? Your turn. No. Okay. We don't need. Okay. We're good there. Thank you. Uh, item seven. Uh, Parks Director Dennis Doval will present the Parks Commission annual report. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Uh, we are excited about this opportunity to present uh, the department's first ever comprehensive annual report for the fiscal year 2017-18. As most of you know, most departments have done an annual report in the past. Uh, the park department really has not. This is uh, an area where we're trying to, to grow in to try to um, inform uh, you as well as the residents of our work that we've done each year within the park department. So as we go through this, certainly if you have any questions, feel free to, to answer or ask those at any time. Um, most communities uh, thrive, uh, most communities that thrive and grow see the benefits of an active park and recreation open space program. While we still have many areas that we uh, have improvements 
uh, that we need to make. Blue Springs Parks and Recreation Department has been working hard over the last year to do just that. Uh, tonight's presentation is broken into five discussion areas. Our recreation programs, Vesper Hall Senior Services, um, the Adams Point Golf Course is, is on here by mistake. It is actually not part of this presentation. The Blue Springs Fieldhouse and the Park Sales Tax um, is, is on this uh, slide presentation. Um, the recreation program started um, that we started in the past year. Um, we've looked at how do we develop more programs for our community to take part of. Two of the bigger programs that we developed this past year was a youth basketball league for ages uh, five year old through uh, second grade. Um, we had 187 participants in the in that program this year. That's both uh, boys and girls. And then we also uh, introduced a new uh, Easter egg event. Uh, it's a flashlight Easter egg hunt for kids uh, that had 85 participants. We've also seen steady growth, if, as you can see by some of those numbers, in our some of our annual programs that we've had from year to year. Our little All Stars program has seen about a 62% uh, increase in growth with 833 participants. And we had a 269% growth in our Spooky Springs Hayride that takes place at the Adams Point Golf Course with 387 participants this past year. Also, another area that's uh, continued to grow each year is our summer day camp program that we started about five years ago. Uh, it saw 14.3% growth, and we had 1,056 participants through the 11 weeks of that, of that program this past year. Um, for the fiscal year 2017-18, total revenues received for our recreation division was 267,000 with expenses incurred of about 491,000, which is a 54% cost recovery. Uh, our goal is to try to get that closer to 70%, but that will take time um, with just some of the changes that we're making in our programming uh, as we move forward. Our Vesper Hall Senior Services, uh, they provide recreation and social activities. They provide transportation services and nutritional services for adults 55 years of age and older. As you can see, uh, we, we serve 13,000 congregate meals. Uh, we've had an increase specifically in our homebound delivered meals. Um, Mark has allowed us to, to continue to add individuals to that. Uh, these are for people who don't have the means to get out and get a nutritious meal. Sometimes this may be the only nutritious meal they get in a day, but we served 18,346 of those meals this past year with about 3,000 increase from the previous year. And then Vesper Hall had over 14,000 hours of, of volunteers by various individuals helping out at, uh, through our senior programs. Financially, uh, they received about $236,000 in revenue. That's through program revenue as well as grants that we received from Mark um, and various other entities and, and sponsorships. We had a total expenses of about $484,000, which total subsidy by the city is about $250,000. This, this uh, general fund subsidizes our senior services. The Blue Springs Field House had opened in uh, 2017 or in 2015. Um, it uh, averages about 1,765 uh, units of membership per year, or this past year. Uh, that translated into 4,152 individual memberships with another 3,000 active day pass. Now we have almost 13,000 day pass users that have a day pass, but these are active day pass. We have about 3,000 that are actively using those. Uh, because there's no way to measure those from the time that we started, so there may be people who have had those and transferred those into to annual memberships that it doesn't transfer that information. Um, but all that translates into over 150,000 member swipes that came in, that's through day passes as well as uh, memberships, but it does not include the, the number of visitors that we get through other various programs that aren't a membership base, such as our little All-Stars program, uh, community events like soccer leagues, basketball tournaments. Uh, if you're familiar with the Ignite event, that the, there's a group that holds the Ignite, our senior grad nights, things like that. Those are not counted in that numbers, so we feel like we're exceeding over 250,000 visits a year in that facility. From an operating revenue standpoint in 2017, uh, the field house generated almost $1,050,000. Uh, while total operating expenses were at $715,000 for a net of just a little over $330,000 for uh, the fiscal year. All net proceeds are set in reserve fund for future capital improvements and maintenance needs for the facility. It allows the facility to purchase things such as new fitness equipment that we just did this year in 2019. 
without having the need to borrow money or make lease purchase payments on equipment. So it's giving us that flexibility when we have improvements that we need to make, whether that's new equipment or we need to replace an HVAC system or a roof repair. Uh, that money is coming out of the reserves that have been generated by the revenues that the field house generates. Um, the park sales tax was passed on April 4th, 2017 and went to effect October 1st of 2017. Projects were clearly outlined in the educational information on how the projects projected $15 million to be spent over the five-year sales tax. This is anticipated to address about 40% of then the deferred maintenance needs. Each year that goes by, of course, we're adding more projects or more items to that list as, as our infrastructure continues to age. Um, so while uh, we're addressing those needs, we continually will have more that will, will come on there. For 2018, most of you are familiar with some of these projects that we were able to do in 2018, Rotary Park Playground, the War Park Playground. As I kind of go through some of these, uh, you'll see some pictures here. This is the before and after of Rotary Park, um, the before and after of, of the tennis courts here at Blue Springs Park. We also did the same thing at the Pink Hill Park tennis courts, and of course, Ward Park Playground. Uh, was improved as well. We also did improvements to Adams Point Golf Course uh, with some improvements to the bunkers as well as to the, the clubhouse roof um, and some trail work that we did along, uh, throughout Blue Springs. Um, for projects this year in the 2018-19 budget, the Woods Chapel Basketball Court, that project is almost complete to date. Uh, the Blue Springs Park restroom facility has been put on hold as we are trying to work with an architect to design restrooms that we'll be using throughout all of our parks as we address restrooms so there's consistency in those. Uh, the Baumgartner Park, Baumgartner Park baseball field has been completed. Uh, both trail work has been completed, and some of the projects at Vesper Hall have been completed or are in the process of being constructed right now, such as painting. Uh, there's been new flooring added to the Vesper Hall. Uh, we're working right now on, on getting doors replaced in that facility. Uh, but the big project this year, of course, is Old Mill Park. As many of you probably have, have been hearing about, the, the community is really excited about Burris Old Mill Park. Um, we have basically we hired an architect they went in and redesigned it we're creating some uh, differences in that park with a one-way road that loops all the way around so instead of having to to go to a dead end and back out and come back out the same way uh, you'll be going right through this park and all the way around kind of counterclockwise through the park which will give us better traffic flow it's also created more parking and of course this is the design that is has been being constructed over the last six months uh, these are just some before and after pictures here of the park itself that you can see before we had uh, some, some worn out facilities, some tired looking facilities. And, and now today, this is kind of what is going on down there. This was about three weeks ago. We're a lot further along than that now, I can tell you that. And uh, excited about uh, what we're going to be able to provide our community here in the next, uh, hopefully, week, week and a half. So. Um, kind of going through this pretty quick. So uh, coming uh, here fairly uh, probably tomorrow, you'll be getting an invite to the grand opening celebration of Burris Old Mill Parks. Uh, it'll be scheduled for June 12th from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, we are going to have some representatives from um, Landscape Structures and Aquatics, which are the companies that are supplying the, the splash pad and the playground at this facility. One of the individuals is uh, works in their uh, inclusive play area. A lot of you may have gotten requests about inclusive play in our playgrounds and providing those for, for individuals with special needs. Uh, this individual will be able to discuss how the playground meets those special needs and how that works for those individuals out there. So certainly somebody that can, can talk their language and their vernacular and really expand upon what we're doing here within our park. So what's the future for the sales tax? We're rev revitalizing our community parks. That's, that's the number one priority today, is that how do we revitalize those parks? How do we make them uh, improved? Uh, we've got a lot of trail pro projects, shelter houses, just some things that are coming on. Um, but as we continue to revitalize our parks and programs, we will work to engage and collaborate with the community in an effort to improve the lives of all Blue Springs residents and visitors. It's our desire for everyone to get out and play naturally with Blue Springs Parks and Recreation in 2019 and beyond. And with that, I'll stand to answer any questions that you may have.
Um, I don't have a question per se, but uh, I must say kudos to your department and you because I know the rains have created havoc with your scheduling. Um, but everyone I've talked to who has come to me about the parks, while they may have questions about how is the money going, how is the park tax versus regular um, budget, it, they're, they're all so complimentary. And so, again, kudos to you. You're doing a great job. And I think that we've got a premier system going. Well, thank you. And certainly, you know, while the staff gets a lot of the praise, we certainly can't do that without the support of our, our park commission, city council, as, but most importantly, the residents who have given us this five-year kind of snapshot to, to show them what we are going to be able to do with uh, the money that they've given us. And hopefully, we're living up to their expectations and exceeding them with the, the money they've given us. Uh, I know I've said this before, but, but when we look at the field house, I mean, that was kind of a gamble this council took. Uh, we challenged staff to maybe come up with some alternative ideas several years ago, and that was one of the ideas you came up with, your staff came forward with, and, and uh, it may took a little bit to get everyone to, on board with that, but it has shown uh, the foresight of both your, your staff and, and coming up with that idea and concept and then of the council to go through with it uh, to provide a great facility at a very affordable cost to the community and it really has paid off um, and I noticed this afternoon that they were milling over there at Verso Mill Park getting ready to lay down asphalt so it looks like the 12th it's gonna look good and probably smell good and I'm looking forward to that opening <laughs> may not have side but we're gonna get we're gonna get there as best we can <laughs> Anybody else? Jerry? Okay. Uh, I want to echo everything the council said. Uh, you know, this has uh, been a great year for the Parks Department. Give all the credit to staff. Um, I had the pleasure of being on the, uh, the liaison last year. Great year. Who's got it this year? I do, sir. Yep. It's a great time to be on there. There's just all kinds of things going on, so keep, keep moving. You're doing a great job of being a steward for the citizens' tax dollars. Thank you. Um, and we'll be there Wednesday this, the 12th, so thank you. All right, thank, uh, so that's it for the presentation. The, uh, that brings us to announcements. Um, again, Wednesday, June 12th, four to six, first Old Mill Park splash pad. That's, a, that's gonna be a great opening that. Bring everybody, bring the kids, grandkids. Um, this Thursday, is J June the 6th, is the 75th anniversary of D-Day. In honor of the day, Susan Rue and the Daughters of the American Revolution will be hosting a ceremony Thursday, June 6th at 10.30 a.m. The location is Pink Hill Park Veterans Way Memorial here in Blue Springs. Uh, there's been a lot of planning on this event and hope to see everybody there. All right. Uh, we've not got any speaker of appearance forms this evening. Anybody would like to address the council from the public? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor by aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>